Donald was incredibly energetic, you know, an infectious enthusiasm, and a, a fount of creativity in terms of ideas. Donald doesn't get into any business or into any situation without doing his homework. You've got a couple of people that have been very, very uh, lucky to have had Donald Shupak working for them. My sister had saved a lot of the letters that my mother had gotten from my high school. One of the letters from the principal who said, Dear Mr. and Mrs. Shupak, uh, constrained to advise you that your son Donald is the single worst student that I have ever had in any class in my entire educational career. Sincerely, Howard G. Spaulding, principal. And Syracuse saw something in me that apparently Mr. Spaulding didn't. When I think back to uh, Donald Shupak and our days at Syracuse, I, I think of a, a young man who had tremendous confidence, great enthusiasm, always upbeat, and obviously that carried right into his great success as an attorney and as a, a businessman. I think from the time I was six years old, my goal was to become a lawyer. I started to practice in 1966 when I graduated law school, and I stopped practicing actively around 1979, having become involved in entrepreneurial activities outside the law, using the law as a basis for many of those activities. I have a fairly low boredom threshold, and in taking on difficult and interesting challenges is what I think makes a lot of entrepreneurs entrepreneurs. And while I think probably I would have ended up making more money, right, had I just stuck to one thing and did it well and built a career, I don't know that I was genetically capable of doing that. He's a terrific salesman. He really knows how to do things that are different and innovative compared to the normal thing. I mean, he thinks outside of the box. I think a company needs to know what it's trying to do and why. My job is to help the company recognize what isn't working, recognize what will work, and then make the company comfortable to bring in the change that's necessary to be able to meet the challenges of the future. Donald is the perfect negotiator. And he comes from that school that thinks you should always leave with something on the table so there's another negotiation in the future. It's interesting that there can be a transaction, and you say the spirits deal, and many people would know what you were talking about, whether they follow basketball, sports, or otherwise, because it's kind of taken on a life of its own. The spirits, the St. Louis team, wanted to get into the NBA, along with four other teams. And when they learned that they weren't going to get in, they threatened to sue on an antitrust exemption or an antitrust line. Uh, and it worked, because ultimately what happened was the NBA took the other four teams, and the spirits got bought off or paid off. The genius of it all, though, was the deal that Donald Shupak did because he had the foresight to see how visual media was going to change in the decades to come. I knew the technology would produce new and different ways of distributing visual media and the ability to um, create a definition that didn't exist was what enabled the Spirit's contract to actually hold up for the 36 years that it did prior to resolution just this year with the NBA. I was very pleased that as my commissionership wound down, we were able to negotiate that to the satisfaction of the teams, or they wouldn't have done it, and the satisfaction of Donald and his clients, who did wonderfully. Luck has sometimes a lot to do with circumstances and result. We needed to also choose our play-by-play -play announcer, which is something I had never done. I said, how do you do that? He said, we're going to get audition tapes. And the only tape I had, I was 22 years old, was a game I had done on the campus station at Syracuse between Syracuse and Rutgers. I took the tape and re-recorded it with the treble down and the bass up to make myself sound older and more authoritative. I said, how many audition tapes did you get after the call went out? And he went, hundreds and hundreds. I said, how do you make a decision? He said, well, we're all supposed to listen to them, you included. I said, I don't have time to listen to hundreds and hundreds of tapes. And I got it to five. I said, were there any from Syracuse? And he went, one. I said, how is it? How is that one? They said, he's either number one or number two. I said, if you can make a deal with him, hire him. I don't have time to listen to tapes. That was Bob Costas. Where's Donald? Donald's right here. Hey, Don Shupak. How are you? What's up? How are you? <laughs> I saw an article in the New York Times on page one, a photograph of Donald Shupak with his son, and the article said that Syracuse University was going to partner with a New York City public school. 
and I almost burst with pride. Leadership Public Service High School was founded in 1993. It was part of the first small school themed movement in the city. Jane President, Donald Shupak, um, Syracuse University, assisted in, in starting the school. He provided very strong both leadership for that in terms of his own time and energy and, and enthusiasm, but he also provided financial support. The school itself has distinguished itself. It's made model citizens out of students that might have fallen through the cracks or fallen by the wayside. A lot of the students, myself included, you know, we're low-income, first-generation students. We need as much support as we can get. In the face of perhaps having engineered the greatest deal of all time, Donald Chupak also was willing to give back to different organizations across the rest of his career. It's that sense of having even done a great deal, he was willing to give back to others. My participation made me aware of the importance of giving back and also the joy and the fulfillment of, of giving back. 